to Berlin right now. We're having a lot of interesting speakers from all around the world. And I managed to bring M and Evelyn together with me yesterday. Could you please briefly mention your background? Um, my name is M. Grassmeter. I'm, my background is in economics and experimental economics. And that's why I learned to do data analysis and software development. And now I'm a consultant at ThoughtWorks. So I, I work on whatever clients ThoughtWorks throws me at. And um, often I'm doing data projects, whether it's predictions or um, image recognition or natural language processing. I kind of run the whole gamut. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm Evelina Gabashova. I work at the Alan Turing Institute, which is the British National Institute for Data Science and Artificial Intelligence. And my background is mostly in computer science. Then I did a machine learning PhD. Then I worked in cancer research. And right now I'm sort of in between industry and academia, trying to bring some problems that are in the industry and um, apply sort of current research to them. So what is a data scientist? or data science, what is it actually? That's a very good question. <laughs> and actually, it's one of the goals that our institute is sort of uh, trying to just define what a data scientist should look like. And I can tell you how we, as the research engineering group within the institute, think what it means. And it means basically something in between software development uh, and mathematics. Uh, it combines a lot of things. It combines with, with uh, sort of business knowledge of the domain you are working with, uh, knowledge of the algorithms, as well as ability to implement them and make them scalable and use proper software engineering practices. I would say a data scientist um, is a software developer who is also using a scientific method and um, often doing work that is non-deterministic. Like we don't know, and at this onset of a two-week sprint, whether we'll have discovered something useful that can improve our, the work that we're doing or whether we've discovered something that it's not useful, that's a good thing to know, but we're not going to use this piece of data or we're not going to use this methodology for approaching the problem. A little bit more of this trial and error and scientific thinking than, than happens in traditional software development. I guess being a data scientist is not a protected Title. Can you hold a master's in data science? I think you can right now. <laughs> Probably by now, yes. Yeah. yeah, and I saw some very interesting thoughts recently where people are arguing that even in high school people shouldn't be learning algebra, they should be learning data science mm -hmm. because that's much more useful in real life and it's going to be a part of many, many jobs in the future. But maybe they should because we tend to talk about that there's so much data around us and every day there's even more data. Is that actually true or are we just more focused on data that has already been there? I mean, I think so the data has always been there, like the world is a thing that we can measure. Now we're maybe starting to make data about the data that exists, so you could say there's an exponential growth in that, but um, I think the meaningful data that's been there has been there forever. Well, where I see the difference is that right now we have methods to analyze data mm -hmm. even from the past yep. that we never had before. For example, my colleagues are working on a project called Living with Machines, which is looking at uh, digitized uh, materials from the 19th century because they want to see the parallels between how machines were introduced and how the industrialization of society was reflected in written literature and in people's sort of diaries and letters, uh, pamphlets, everything, and how it mirrors what's happening in our society right now. And looking at the 19th century, that doesn't seem like the stereotypical data science task, but it is, and current methods allow us to basically process a lot of data together using the methods we have right now. If we look uh, a bit ahead out in the future, what would we need the most? Software developers or data scientists? And be honest. <laughs> Both. <laughs> uh, for example, in our team we are research engineering and when people join our team they can choose if they want to be called data scientists or software engineers and people change titles and we see it as a spectrum basically. So it's about where you put yourself on the spectrum. 
I hope to see convergence in these. I hope to see data scientists doing continuous delivery, doing infrastructure as code, doing test-driven development. I would love to explore more about how do we do quality assurance in our data pipelines and in our data models. Um, I think all the skills and learnings that we have from modern best practices and software should be transferred over to the field of data science as well. Most often, I think people are relating data science to machine learning and AI, maybe because it is so easy just to, to draw that parallel. Are we too, too focused on machine learning rather than good old plain math? Well, I like to use the metaphor of an iceberg because data science is a bit like an iceberg where the top of the iceberg is just fitting the fancy models and using the machine learning and doing all the fancy stuff that gets reported in papers, etc. But the bottom is dealing with the data. And my favorite joke is that data science is 80% data wrangling and 20% complaining about data <laughs> wrangling. So that's how I see it, really. Yeah. I really liked your, your, what you said earlier, like if I gave you the perfect model, would you be able to use it? What would you do with it? And um, I think that's the hard part is positioning yourself in a place where you have, if you had the right model, how could we operationalize it and make it useful? I like to joke, um, one of the most pressing questions in data science today is, couldn't we just use a linear regression for this? Like that can get a lot of people pretty far, a logistic or, or linear regression to, to do your classifications or your predict predictions. And from there, if you could get a thing that delivers value to somebody using that, then let's talk about making it fancy or making it more complex. But, but for the vast majority of problems, the hard part is not which algorithm do I use, how do I perfect it, but how do I get myself into a position where I can use this model right. Given that we could define this universal model, that could help us in many, many cases. Wouldn't that mean that your work as data scientists could be taken over by machines? I would love that. <laughs> no, the thing is, uh, the problem is that all the model fitting and model selection, etc., that can be fairly automated and there are automated ways to do that already. But the whole dealing with data, that's the difficult part really. And there's no ways to automate that yet, at least. Uh, because you say, oh, data wrangling, but it's, uh, you need to make sure that the data are clean, that they make sense for your use case. You have to make sure that they even make sense for the model. Uh, for example, you have a linear regression model, which works fine in many cases, but then you have one outlier and that completely changes your prediction. And without looking at the data, without understanding what are the assumptions that the model makes with respect to the data, uh, you are hopeless. But that's just a matter of machine power, isn't it? So we see quantum computing slowly barking out in the horizon somewhere. Wouldn't that completely change the picture? Uh, I don't think it's solving the problem that data science has right now. Because, for example, I'm not worried about the machines taking over and all the jobs being automated, etc. I'm worried about people using the current algorithms that we have yeah. right now incorrectly, using biased data, uh, using them to affect people's lives without actually understanding what the model does and why is it biased and where is it biased, etc. And quantum computing doesn't solve that at all. So it's more about educating the world and each other than actually just keeping adding tools. Right. And then using the yeah. algorithms for the right things. Yeah. I mean, um, the job is not the end goal. Our, I think our goal in society is to provide like safe and happy and healthy thing, things that can enable people to be safe and happy and healthy. And a job is a means to that end right now. But if, if automation takes my job and we can still have a society that ensures that for, for all people, then, then great. Then why not? <laughs> I think that's a wonderful way to conclude this discussion. Thanks a lot for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you.